Break came when Love Supreme was reissued again. <laughs> I just traveled to go to Southampton. And uh, I went to the local record shop there. And there it was, you know, Love Supreme, you know. Oh, I was so happy. <laughs> listen to it and I thought, oh wow, this is it, man. It kind of uh, paraphrased the whole Coltrane music for me. Like, it was a kernel, it was a thing that um, was the essence of Coltrane, you know, to me. You know, it was, uh, it had all the ingredients of a Coltrane. The slow sections, the fast sections, the uh, torrentials and the sublime, everything was there, you know. Um, it was a whole new world, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and from then on, I think I caught a cool trip bug. <laughs> I, I wasn't playing the saxophone at the time, I was just a listener, you know. And I was repeatedly listening, and I realized, oh, I have a good love for the saxophone, you know. So maybe I should buy one, just toying with the idea. And slowly I worked and bought myself a saxophone. And I found myself loving the Coltrane thing even more. I didn't study it like I'll go to school and study how to play it. But you know, I had so much Coltrane in the room that you know sometimes I could project that kind of sound without understanding theoretically what he was doing. <laughs> Study it rigorously, harmonically, and you know what do you call it? Uh, theoretically, mm -hmm. I just love the sound. I embrace the sound. Mm -hmm. 